Let's rock and roll, boys. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another another Nintendo podcast. My name is Danny Tortelli, and I'm joined today by Matthew Schultz. Hello. And Austin Cummings. Hey, Danny. All right. So, boys, we're here today. We're about a week out uh, from uh, the most recent Nindy Direct from Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really what we're going to dive into today. But first, we need Matthew. Can you bring us to our favorite segment for the day? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and start off with some big and in the news. <laughs> Yes, yes, here we are, fancy music. Excellent, All right. excellent. So, big end of the news. Yeah, we are talking about that Nintendo Direct, that Nindy Direct. Quite a few games that were listed. Um, hopefully everyone watching, uh, all three of you, were able to see the whole Nindy Direct. Um, we were able to get a good uh, viewing of everything. About mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 15 games, I think. Um, yes, this is a, a good list. Um, so I'll, I'll run through the list, the list, excuse me, really quick, um, Whoa, and then we'll, we'll, the we'll dive back in. We will take the risk. Whatever it takes. We do with the show every week. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So the nice. list of games. Um, we have Cuphead. We have Overland. We have My Friend Pedro, Neo Cab, The Red Lantern, Darkwood, Katana Zero, Rad, Creature in the Well, Blood Roots, Pine, Super Crate Box, Nuclear Throne, Vlam Beer Arcade. Wow, I nailed that one. Swim Sanity. Blaster Master Zero Two. Heck of a not name. Not related to <laughs> Reader Blaster or Math Blaster, that kid game going on. I don't know. We haven't beaten it yet. Who can say? <laughs> Alternate ending. Yeah, Second seen credit, the end credit scene. Math Blaster himself comes out, baby. Congratulations, Blaster Not. Mission accomplished. Stranger Things 3, the game. Um, and Cadence of Hyrule. Wow. So, yeah, we had a fun little list here. We do. Um, so yeah, quite a few games that were got announced. Um, big surprises for each of you, Austin. Were there ones that stuck out that you weren't really expecting when they first aired? Well, you know, Danny, uh, great question. I would say now here on another Nintendo podcast, there are two things that we do routinely. Number one is just talk into the void, into the mm-hmm. infinite nothingness of the internet, knowing yep. no one will hear our cries. That's no. n- first and foremost. But the second thing we do is uh, just talk safe, about I promise. the Nintendo Directs. You know, that's something we brings us joy. Uh, and something we you know enjoy talking about to one another, and the chance that somebody's eavesdropping on us via perhaps SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or our YouTube channel, another mm-hmm. Nintendo podcast. And so... Um, but as such, the Nindy Directs, you never know exactly what you're going to get. But a big theme of 2018 for Nintendo Switch was that the Nindies, such as Hollow Knight or Into the Breach, Dead Cells, those are huge games for the Switch. They did uh, gangbusters sales-wise, and they really elevated Each. the Switch's library in a bit of a dearth of strong first-party games until the very end of the year. So uh, going into this Nindies Direct, I kind of felt like that momentum was going to be, you know, continued to be, uh, carried forward, but I feel like when there's a, a normal direct, a few times on this very podcast, we've done predictions, and we know that for the Nindies, it's kind of an impossible task, short of the games that may have been tweeted about, or you know are coming from a, a different direct, but this one was really the first, I felt, of its kind, where uh, there were announcements that felt so big that we could have done uh or in the future could it elevated the entire platform of the nindy direct the biggest one being cadence of hyrule to take it would have been impossible to have guessed but at the same time uh it's something that is in the echelon of those other big games it's a it's a full zelda game really made by an indie developer utilizing their pre-existing game but really essentially from uh you know the ground up so it was a, a different tier of Nindy, I felt, uh, direct. Uh, and another example of that, uh, Danny, that you mentioned, is Cuphead. So Cuphead kicked it off. Cuphead is a game mm-hmm. uh, that is published by Microsoft and uh, only had appeared on the Xbox and PC. So it's a big deal that it is now going to be on the Switch on April 18th. Have either of you uh, engaged with Cuphead or interacted, uh, played it at all? Yeah. I played it at a couple of, I played it at, like, 
random conventions I feel like that I've been to. Like it was at it was playable at, mm-hmm. at uh, PAX East that I was at, and it was it just happened to be there. It wasn't like it was been out at the time, but um, it was cool to see. I remember it had a very long development, um, yeah. and it was you know people were just clamoring for this, and it was so interesting because this was it was one of those games that like Microsoft needed to get out early yeah. on in the Xbox's uh, Xbox One's life. Um, mm-hmm. To kind of have some original content out there, um, or yeah, you know, Halo or exclusive save, content, yeah. and it just wasn't, and it wasn't, and it wasn't. It was announced yeah. all the way back in 2014. It's by Studio MDHR, and uh, Matt, kind of like you said, we saw it kind of at the unveiling of the Xbox, or at least early in that time frame. Uh, and so I think people looked at it like this will be a tentpole game. You know, we know there's yeah, going to yeah. be you know Halo Five Guardians at the time, Gears of War Four. Uh, but this was kind of looked at as like kind of a big indie that Microsoft was going to be probably responsible for. And so uh, it feels like a big uh, get for the Switch. And I think it opens up, we've talked a lot about the friendship between Microsoft and Nintendo, but Ori in the Blind Forest, that's another game in the kind of Metroidvania style that would be awesome as a you know explorative platformer right. on the Switch to take with you. Now that feels kind of on the table. And you start to wonder, we've talked about you know, X- Xbox said previously they're bringing Xbox Live to the Switch. And this is the first obvious example where you can unlock achievements and perhaps check in, like you can sign in, maybe. Maybe you can connect with your friends list. We're kind of yet to be seen, but at least on phone games, you can earn achievements for some Xbox profile things. And so this is kind of the first implementation, but it will be interesting to see if it goes further with Game Pass or if there will be a streaming solution or as... Uh, you know, Halo, yeah, Halo Infinite. Is there going to be some type of Halo content that'll be something right. you can do on the go? And it'll be, yeah, especially because not Nintendo related, but Google uh, has their Stadia announcement that yeah. also came out of last week, where their big streaming platform. And there's been a lot of talk about who will be the first one, first person to be the Netflix of gaming. And it seems like Microsoft is trying to kind of beat Google to the punch on that, which will be challenging. Well, I, I think that's why this is so interesting. Uh, first yeah. of all, how hilarious that we here we are on a Nintendo podcast, uh, you know, where five plus years ago, people were calling for doom and gloom, bring Nintendo, you know, games to Xbox and to PlayStation. And sure. here we are with a Xbox game on a Nintendo yeah. console. Um, and it's 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 awesome. I think it's indicative of what Microsoft's trying to do and to bring their their games everywhere. Uh, I think it's smart for them to be doing that. Um, and I think it's kind of uh, represents what they want their future of gaming to look like. I think they're going to be in streaming services. You know, the, I, I, we know that that's happening at some point, and um, they have the library and the and the you know the the gaming pedigree to to make that happen in a way that Google can't. Um, but Danny, you said it best. Just kiss already. I mean, this is an amazing <laughs> partnership that we've seen now, yeah. um, and I think it's. I just. I love this little uh, love story between the two. What do you. What do you think about that? I mean, you I, as a micro, yeah. as our like Microsoft fanboy on the podcast. What would you say? Yeah, I love it. Um, I think this is a good. This is a good game to start experimenting with, kind of dipping our toes in this water of of a shared sort of uh, platforms and backend stuff between. Microsoft and Nintendo. I mean, the game itself, even if it wasn't Microsoft who made it, feels like it's built for a Switch or just the Nintendo atmosphere. Um, you know, it's it's got this like ancient Disney like tugboat Willie feel. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and this 1930s old, animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is old looking. cartoon art style. Um, it, uh, you know, it's got this uh, simple um, side scrolling kind of aspect to it. Um, but I shouldn't say simple because actually everything I've heard from it is it's very difficult. Um, and I've even heard the developers say the Switch version will not be any less difficult. I'm they're sure not going to try and rein it back at all. Um, they're yeah. going to make it as best of an honest to goodness port as they can of mm. the of the uh, Xbox version. <laughs> Um, yeah, just just looking at it, it's just there's so much going on on the screen that you're like, right? You know, like this was, you know, if you're if you're a gamer and you've got a child, this is a great Saturday morning cartoon for them and game for you. You know, just right. plop them in front of the TV and watch me play because it's there's a lot happening on the screen yeah. at any given time for sure. And it has like a uh, game explained it's some nice 
comparison videos of the visuals and also the loading times, which were not as hot, though they did compare it to the Xbox One X, which is mm-hmm. the most powerful home console at yeah. the moment. But the as far as the visuals, it looks great. And it you can see how they've, on the Switch version, they've really amped up the contrast. Like the visuals are a little brighter on the Switch. There's less of like an overall kind of film graininess uh, effect that was present and kind of a dust filter that was present on the original, which had this great look. Um, and I have it on Xbox, but it, the Switch version, you know, it's a smaller screen for playing it in handheld, and this will kind of help you keep track of your character because a lot of the game is kind of shoot 'em up style uh, mm-hmm. and bullet heck uh, type of gameplay <laughs> where you're going to want to make sure you can always immediately localize your character. So the uh, that was exciting. We have Minecraft already on the Switch. This is just another example. We also had Halo Master Chief Collection announced for PC last week. It just seems like there's a lot of things where hey could some of the original halo games come to switch one way or another you know is that is that something they're opening open to doing because there was a rumor last week and i know the three of us texted a little about it i sent it out which is that uh, someone had said there was going to be a big announcement for nintendo coming soon that was on on the level of seeing mario on a playstation you know that that was kind of like the the level of crossover uh you know big idea that was going to come out of that announcement and i'm i would guess cuphead is not that but it does make you wonder does (laughs) that mean there's going to be you know a, a halo something or other on the switch because it almost certainly is microsoft putting something on nintendo's platform and not the other way around yeah xbox wants this type of recognition by a different audience they want this type of uh accessibility to their games knowing that xbox has been thoroughly outperformed by playstation 4 this generation and so it's only for microsoft to win by making their stuff more available uh nintendo doesn't have any incentive to put their stuff on the not so popular xbox i mean and they have been winning the cross-platform play you know, arena like they've they've won hearts and minds for sure. Right. I mean, there are Nintendo fans and PC gamers who appreciate that they can play their Xbox games. Uh, yeah, you can play against, Rocket League against, uh, right. against the people, but you cannot do right. that with PlayStation. And they only mm-hmm. only recently ish was Fortnite even an exception that PlayStation would let them play with other platforms. That's right. the only game. So mm-hmm. Microsoft has made a lot of consumer friendly, consumer focused decisions, yeah. such as the access- accessibility controller, uh, games with gold. The, all the uh, backwards, backwards compatibility, compatibility. yeah and there it is. game pass i mean getting day and date new releases like crackdown 3 or uh just forza these games that sea of thieves if you don't even need to buy any xbox games to keep because everything you get that day with the you know with the service that's basically you, know, you get it on sale about the cost of one or two games a year um so it's an incredible value so it will be interesting to see how this continues and cuphead's a very exciting one it comes out so soon everything in the indies direct is so soon that's like the great thing about these Cuphead's directs out is now right 18th of april so we have a few weeks oh, april. Like very, i thought very it was soon. i yeah. thought it was this month i was like oh wow it's already out <laughs> no but it's it's close you know and that that is exciting and that and yeah you can you can pre-purchase high. it right already and <laughs> Yeah, get those so. gold coins. Boy, boy, can you! And you can yeah. definitely get those gold coins, and you can look at them and enjoy seeing a little a little icon on your Switch home screen, and just pretend <laughs> like it's accessible. Then when it becomes accessible, you say, "Well, maybe there's something else I can pre-purchase and not play all the <laughs> delightful things I already own." Um, and so, yeah. as such, uh, I am excited very much so for it's very, uh, very it's very exciting, very good. And here yeah. Like, so uh, as we went through the list earlier, there is a <laughs> oh look at that, look at that. He's getting ready to roll. Hey, for for viewers on YouTube, they get to see the the Switch uh, Cuphead logo. Wow, very worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so as we went through that list uh, earlier, there is a there's a cup full of games uh, on, on the radar. Some would say. Um, <laughs> Yeah, as far as other ones that maybe stuck out to us, um, I know for me, um, Pine looked pretty cool. Um, that one uh, looked like this kind of open world adventure thing out in nature, very Breath of the Wild y, I would say. Um, had some even interesting like enemies that were fighting each other. I don't know if you guys saw the trailer for that. It was something like funky right, looking it's, alligators it's... like fighting like moose, meese, mooses, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, those. Uh, those Mises. ones, um, they're like little yeah. warring animal factions, um, and you were just kind of like out exploring, collecting loot, well, you see, trading you got stuff. The Baratheons, right? They're um, the stacks, yeah. and then they're fighting the <laughs> the, the, the stacks. Foxes. Yep. Winter is coming. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. I so this was one of those games where so I was watching the direct, like uh, like I mentioned before the show, 
uh, in an office uh, at a meeting on silent. And I just, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, the, the direct started. Let me just like pull up the live stream and then just put it there on silent just so I could kind of look down and see what was being announced. And this was the first game I had, I, I had missed a good chunk of the beginning. So I saw mm. this and I was like, wow, this it's very colorful. It seems like it fits in a very, I thought it was a Nintendo published game at first. I was like, well, what is this experience? But um, it does have that like Breath of the Wild feel. Um, there was a couple of a couple of scenes where are like little clips of, of like, you know, you're in a mountain and then you're kind of in a in a mm-hmm. field and then you're riding your horse into a town and then you're in a desert. And I was just like, OK, this is <laughs> this is interesting. Is this going to scratch the itch uh, that many Breath of the Wild players still have? Um, is this going to be a disappointment? Um, how big is this game going to be? But I do say, I do, I do want to say that like similar to Breath of the Wild, like I like how much time they put into, in, you know, creating uh, these different cultures and these different species that existed in Hyrule. And this looks really interesting. I don't know why these creatures are warring. Again, I watched it completely in silent, um, but I'm definitely bought into that one, uh, yeah. or at least we'll be following it. It's funny that you mentioned like, oh, well, this game just like kind of scratched the itch for Breath of the Wild. It made me think of you guys remember that game Brawl Out that was mm-hmm. out before Smash. Right, Smash yeah, and everyone's right. like, this this looks like just like a fan made Smash game. Like I, that's that's kind of the vibe We're I got jumping, of this. Right. right, right, right. Like this this feels like a um, a spiritual successor fan made version of like Breath of the Wild. Um, right. Just from the initial look um, could still be very good. I don't say that in any sort of negative light. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what I, it's certainly what I thought of when I first saw it too. Yeah. Are you like Mowgli? Yeah. Like, who are you? Why are you yeah, this, something this like, like that? Maybe boy like boy character in this, you know, world of, you know, yeah, he looked like he, animal he wasn't, factions. Looked like he wasn't in much of a rush. I mean, there's the warring, uh, moose, the warring alligator, and he was just chilling on the other side of the hill, like with his friend, just at a campfire, like, Hey, can you all quit fighting? Can't we all just get along? I'm just trying to, uh, mm, enjoy some. Right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is what we aim for here at AMP, mm-hmm. um, as well as what Nintendo does with their directs. Um, yeah, other games um, that stuck out. Um, I know the popular one, uh, certainly with the new season on the horizon too, um, Stranger Things. Uh, Stranger Things 3, the game. Um, I didn't think they had a game in the works, um, but I know they're trying to build the hype for this summer when the new season comes out. So yeah, that one looks pretty interesting. Um, definitely looks like it's still doing a very good job of keeping that like 80s sort of vibe and, and getting all, all those right. throwbacks in. Um, yeah, did you guys see that one? Was that one that kind of caught your eye at all or one that stuck out? Only that it harkens back a little bit to the the era of early odds movie tie-in games uh, that you know yeah. I could have imagined playing something that looks, and this game could be awesome in its own right. We've definitely seen uh, developers like formally to uh telltale games put together Mm, games mm -hmm. based on popular ip that do a different spin on like game of thrones and that you know explain Mm -hmm, a story mm -hmm. that wasn't featured but has characters and um so walking dead and yeah yeah for sure um and so it would be maybe it'll be great it does remind me a little more though something i might have played like back on the phone or something that uses the property and uh maybe is less necessarily uh maybe catch eye catching on its own but we you know we'll hold uh i will hold my thoughts until it actually comes out but it's surprising kind of neat that it gets a game did i ever tell either of you that uh when i was in italy last year i saw john and nance from uh, stranger things so it was very exciting what? No way! No. Yes, I know. Well, I guess I can talk about it for a while. But basically, we were at uh, we were in Rome and um, that restaurant. We we're leaving, and I was like, "Oh, these people look a lot like John and Nance." And do I know? Do I remember the actor and actress's name? Absolutely not. And uh, <laughs> though my sister and I had just finished season two of Stranger Things because we had been waiting. She's in the Peace Corps currently, and we were oh, the family nice. was kind of reconvening uh, in this European trip. In any event, I had waited to watch it with her, so we watched it and then like looked up. Um, the just like what the cast was up to in the few months after saw just some posts that it, that the act this is getting really into the weeds in any event um <laughs> yeah. we, we saw a picture of them and then saw them like that very night at uh at dinner and we're very excited and, what? Uh, i know so it was uh yeah, it was something uh, else you, it was a real you get the upside, autographs you get the receipts upside down um did not but we did you know ruin i'm sure or at least <laughs> interrupt their dinner briefly to say hey big fans um thanks for your work and uh, like, oh, thanks. Uh, I think they were joe, a joe been, who plays been Steve, noticed. uh 
you know, uh, the kid with the bat. The mm-hmm. he's taking on kind of a big brother mentoring role in yes, season yes. two. He's yeah, a Curie. he's a DePaul alum. Uh, no way. The way I work yeah. and. Get a recent, a recent alum. What are we doing? I know. Yeah. No, he's, he's right. all over. He's like, they constantly are reporting about him, especially as the seasons come up uh, each year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do yeah, love his little moment at the things. end of the season three uh, trailer where he's like uh, kind of geeking out with, yeah. uh, with the other, one of the other stars. Oh, yeah, that, that, that kind of, those, yeah. Yeah, the, that brotherly mentorship uh, mentality, you know, right. has been really, it's a warm character arc. Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, the opposite of warm would be cold, and uh, one oh, of the games that really I really enjoyed was uh, <laughs> there it a is. game Look about the uh, I did a rod. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. That was probably the next game that really caught my attention, which was the Red Lantern. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, uh, I know there was a whole kind of little, uh, you know, before they showed the trailer, one of the uh, women from the development team kind of came on and talked about how they were excited but nervous to present on this game. Uh, it, it very much reminded me of Firewatch and just mm-hmm. like its its presentation. And also um, Balto. And here's the thing. What a <laughs> film. <laughs> what? Wow. Get that girl the medicine. Come on. We catch the end of the race. Mm-hmm. Comes the unforgettable legend of Balto. I, I, don't, I mean, I want to play it. It looks beautiful. It's like the story is so simple, right? It's just like recruit dogs. Run the race and mm-hmm. finish. It's um, an ultimately a pretty easy race IRL. You just get a pack <laughs> of dogs and you just beeline it. You know, they're doing all the work. They're For mushing. all of our fans in Alaska, we, we definitely <laughs> realize it's not an easy race. So they didn't say, they didn't say when fans, it's coming out. We know out, you use these dogs to commute. We mean disrespect. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know if you guys saw that one, but uh, that was yeah. that's probably my, uh, aside from uh, the Candace of Hyrule, uh, that was my my number one. Yeah, no, that definitely looked pretty good and had a good, um, uh, you know, led you to believe I thought at the beginning of the trailer it was going to be this because it's narrated by this uh, young woman who talks about like, oh, like I thought I was going to become this. And I told my family I wanted to move to Alaska and like um, I wanted to prove to them that I could be something. So I thought it was going to be something like her as a and I did a rod racer and like it was gonna be like a racing game of dogs. And then all of a sudden the bear comes out of nowhere and spoiler just attacks her and, and I think kills one of the dogs. Um, and it's actually turns into like a survival game a little bit um, where you have to like keep uh, yourself in, intact. You need to keep your dogs like uh, safe and like healthy and everything. Right. Um, I was like, this is this is really interesting. This is getting like really deep. Like this is some it's millennial that found where herself I, I know in I'm some gonna weird, get scared yeah. or nervous. In a test of will. <laughs> He challenged the impossible. There was a period of time when when the Call of Duty games were uh, really coming out. And they were super hot narratively, uh, kind of the, after the post Call of Duty Modern War- Warfare, so Call of Duty Four games, and they had this you know big bombastic Michael Bay element to it. But every time when there'd be a new trailer uh, to announce the new game, there often would be like a companion animal. A dog. There's like a number of trailers mm-hmm. of dogs, and there'd always be like these great articles that would arise on the internet, being like, "Does like the dog's definitely not going to make it?" Like, at one point, because <laughs> right. he was always doing these surprise deaths, and it's like you know the dog is not, you know, really pull at your heartstrings. But in, in that trailer, there's the dogs and the bear, and um, you can see, you know, it's a game that looks like it'll be kind of more like Firewatch in a way that it's a you know it's a fairly linear game you aren't doing a lot of actual mm-hmm. exploring it's just a little moment from this person's summer spent uh you know in the Firewatch cabin and the uh you kind of imagine this being the same way you're not going to be doing probably a ton of racing but it has a kind of visual novel format it looks really beautiful and I'm sure it'll tell yeah. a good story and those are I don't know if either of you played or you might look into if you haven't or viewers uh Virginia which was a game that came out probably about three years oh. ago uh and it's on PlayStation but it's an amazing, a really wonderful game that's probably mm. all of about two hours long. And there's, uh, if you play, I guess, slowly, but it's, um, it has a really simple, low poly look to it that it looks almost PlayStation One. You play this uh, woman who is like an FBI agent, and she's in, she's basically investigating this disappearance of a child, and kind of coming onto this FBI team where uh, your character and the other lead character, they're black women working on this FBI force, and so they're facing all types of intolerance within these group of people that are trying to work towards a common goal. But the mm. whole game is presented in these really short, like uh, seconds long sometimes, or just a couple minute vignettes. There's no dialogue in the entire game, just like the sweeping music that then kind of immediately jumps you, cuts you into like the next scene.
Let me just jump yeah. on to uh, Blaster Master Zero Two, probably the do worst it, title. It. But Blaster Master <laughs> uh, is a game that you can now play if you've not played the original NES game in your NES uh, kind of virtual console, Nintendo Switch Online games. The original one is on there uh, on the Switch, mm-hmm. and but. Uh, Inti Creates made Blaster Master Zero, which was a game that came out around the launch of Blaster Master, or excuse me, of the Switch. And that game took, it was, re- you know, a remake, uh, but it took the original game and spruced it up quite a bit visually and playstyle wise. And it is, uh, Blaster Master Zero was a game that I enjoyed at the launch of the Switch. Now, the, uh, the company that made it, NT Creates, is founded by former Capcom employees. They made the Mega Man Zero games. They made uh, Azure Striker, Gunvolt, and um, also the very good and short kind of retro-inspired Bloodstained Curse of the Moon game that came out on Switch last year. So they've had a lot of um, a lot of hits. A lot of these are smaller, downloadable games. But Blaster Master Zero was... Uh, you know, really fun. The only thing that it kind of suffered from was, was it was entirely too easy. It was super, super easy, but it had mm. fun crossovers with like Shantae was a DLC character, Shovel Knight was a DLC character, and it works like a kind of Metroidvania game with exploration where you're in this tank, the Sophia, but you get out of it and you explore like on foot, and then there's these kind of top down isometric sections when you're in like little mini caverns or like a little mini dungeon where you might do a boss fight where you're doing like little shooting and stuff in an isometric format. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of inventive. There isn't a lot else yeah. that's really like it. Um, and both this new game and the old one were only $10, which I appreciate. Oh, first one right, took right. about five nice. hours. And by the end of it, I was really ready for it to be done because it is <laughs> easy and a little slow, but this one is an entirely new game, not a remake. And uh, by all accounts, it's been received really positively as being more challenging more dynamic with the levels and even yeah. in the trailer you see like uh things in the foreground firing volleys into into the background where the sophia this tank uh is like jumping around and having to dodge it looks a lot more action heavy uh in a way that the slow pace of the first game was a little bit tiring so right. that's definitely what i'm it came out already uh and probably will check out at some point but uh just want to give a little shout out to that one nice yeah, to all you all you blaster fans, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you for that summary. Um, As I was watching the stream on my phone, there was, uh, you know, I was like, how do I turn off the the live chats? And a lot of people were talking about how excited they were for that particular game, um, yeah, and how they were going to download it as soon as they could. So. I love when Nintendo does the like it's available now, and they always have done yeah. a couple. The best of which has yeah. been Hollow Knight, and then Into the Breach have been like the immediate big indies from yeah. past indie directs. And uh, but I. To, to the extent where now when it's like, oh, like it's coming out in a few months, it's brutal, especially for these Nindies and the next game where I'm sure we're going to talk about. Uh, or, you know, years out this spring. in the case of a work crew. I know, I know. So you almost want everything to come out just about immediately, particularly because a lot of these games are on PC. But the, this Nindies Direct was one of the first times we've seen some games announced that are first on the Switch or exclusive to the Switch. Mm-hmm. You know, we have... Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff for like Cuphead outside of Microsoft. It's a you know exclusive there, and the uh, as far as like Blaster Master, that one's exclusive. The Stranger Things game is exclusive, um, mm-hmm. and all these games are you know to come out in the, uh, the immediate future. And the big one though is uh, Cadence of Hyrule. So do we want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah, let's let's get into it. Yeah, for the first time ever, um, Nintendo has handed um, the IP of the Zelda series to an indie developer. Um, these are the developers of the Crypt of Necrodancer um, mm-hmm. series of games. Um, it's the developer uh, Brace Yourself Games. That's the that's the company. Um, yeah, so they're making this game um, in the style of Crypt of Necrodancer, um, but legitimately not just a spiritual successor or spiritual like uh sibling to uh the zelda games actually with um zelda and link and all of the baddies and enemies and the little characters um, and items from the zelda series is in this so yeah so nintendo is getting uh pretty friendly with not just microsoft but they're they're even making friends with these indie developers um letting them take the reins and try something new with some of their ip it's exciting because we saw the Legend of Zelda series in the hands of Capcom back in the day for the Oracle of Ages mm. and Seasons on Game Boy Color. Oh, yes. And then the Minish Cap. Yeah. They're all 
Capcom joints, um, but this is an indie, and that's the first time. That's a big deal because, uh, like you said, Danny, you know it. It's a totally new game in that style of their of their game main game that people really loved, and the format of that game is uh it's a roguelike now that's a term that gets thrown around a lot and it mm-hmm. is fits not particularly uh th- i think the definition of it is really a little bit vague uh unlike metroidvania which is i think a fairly specific uh descriptor for roguelike games when you think of the game uh rogue even or back those were old uh games that were had kind of a permadeath element to it that's kind of where roguelike is adopted for games like dead cells or um maybe enter the gungeon but really they were like tile based movement through like corridors that were like you would move once the enemies would move at the same time you would move enemies would move and so you'd uh, you would exp- basically a dungeon crawler kind of like the mystery dungeon games if you play any of those mm. there's the pokemon versions of that as well or the other mm-hmm. uh chunsoft games for a train odyssey and uh in any event though so it's more it's less than in the vein of the super ultra challenging and more of the exploring a dungeon taking a single action for a simultaneous action that the computer takes but the the catch for crypt to the necro necro dancer is that the whole game plays to different music tracks and Mm -hmm. on tempo that's when you get an opportunity to move and so too does the enemy so you need to be kind of staying on the beat rhythmically in order to advance attack explore these different environments so talking now about we'll be done with like some fun Zelda music. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what's really cool is that it's going to, you know, at least from reading some of the articles, I know IGN did an article on how this came about. Um, it was cool to, to, to read about how much care and time they're putting into making sure that this is uh, an authentic Zelda iteration, even though they, they say like, hey, this is going to be a first and foremost, a Crypt of the Necrom Dancer. Mm-hmm. sequel or style game uh universe of that <laughs> game <laughs> however but they, they are like this is also at the same time also we are considering this a zelda game and how interesting that this so this is only their second game that they've they're releasing uh ever they're about they have about 12 uh people working at this place yeah. and they're making a zelda a zelda game it is a um, game. that's the wild thing it's not just like a level or a skin it's like Link to the Past Enemies, original music. You can play Zelda, like, so few games can you play Zelda at all that are Zelda games. You know, like, Smash, and then, like, not a lot else. Spirit Tracks, you can, like, kind of use her as a ghost. Like, and then, like, the CDI game. That's, like, it. Yeah. I want to read this little little quote from the article on IGN. Um, It says... You know, so they spoke with Ryan Clark, who's the founder of Crypt of the Necro Dancer uh, and developer from Brace Yourself Games. Uh, and Clark said, you know, we were considering making a new Switch project, um, and we imagined how cool it would be to have Zelda characters appearing in uh, Necro Dancer, um, maybe, say, as DLC. But Nintendo's interest apparently grew beyond a simple DLC. To our surprise, Nintendo was extremely interested in the project, and before we knew it, we were working on a completely new title, making up uh, Necro Dancer with The Legend of Zelda. Uh, and they go on to kind of talk about how, like, you know, people are trying, like, smaller developers are constantly reaching out to Nintendo to try to put their yeah. Nintendo's IP into their games in some way. Does it I mean it's a, it benefits sure. both? And, um, yeah. And this is yet another example of Nintendo saying, like, actually, we, we're going to be a little more loose and creative with our IP. And here you go. Yeah. Um, so that's, it, that, that's, a, that's awesome. And I think this game is going to do extremely well because of that. In fact, as soon as I saw the trailer, I'm like, huh, what kind of looks like Hyrule? Those trees look yeah. right. like Zelda. Right. Oh, it's is raining that music? Too? Does that music? And then sound yeah, and then like? the music yeah. picks up. <laughs> um, I was very interested in, in Crypt of the Necro Dancer, but never never picked it up. Just okay. I briefly hear say incorrectly that Crypt of the Necro Dancer didn't come out on Switch, but I'm dead wrong, and I'm very sorry. Even was so. I that's yeah. kind of the biggest thing that surprised to me is just because it shows like a very loose and well, I guess risk forward uh, Nintendo because it's a game and Matt maybe you can check this for me, but. I don't. I gotta imagine that the the Zelda IP holders, Anuma or whomever, they had not engaged with this game like a ton. It's an indie game, not on their platform. Like I feel like if Yacht Club Games, the Shovel Knight well, guys, no, it's it's Crypt of the Necro Dancer is on Switch. Is it on Switch? Okay, yeah, well, it, it was in. I think it was in last year's 2018 Spring uh, Showcase. Okay, um, or was, or the 2017 one. It was in. It was in one of them. Um, that's where I first learned of the game. Um, you know, they're just 
I, I like I love these like kind of bot to the rhythm and the beat uh style of games because I think they're just getting super creative and sure uh this one looked really cool I just just kind of passed it up so uh, I I guarantee there's going to be some kind of deal um so if you're thinking about buying it like myself <laughs> then probably wait until closer to uh when you, this you uh, <laughs> I don't think we even have a date I don't think we have a date yet no. no, I don't think they. I think they just said coming soon, uh, no, sometime in 2019. Can yeah. you, we can we can say now that we have a uh, a swi- uh, another Switch Zelda game coming to yeah, two <laughs> Zelda games. Yeah, this I year. was trying to I was trying to think. They mentioned you know those rumors we had heard the past couple of months of there will be two Zelda games this year. Mm-hmm. Like, is this is this the other one? Is this the other one? I mean, I mean can, you can't really argue against it, right? I mean, it, yeah, it's I guess. Hyrule's in the name. I so. right right. I, I mean, it's it's certainly yeah. Uh, I think I'm just waiting for like the Ocarina of Time HD Ultra. Remake, <laughs> right. Yeah, we could be. Yeah. Um, um, so either way, yes. 20, 2019 uh, is really shaping up to be another big year for the Switch. Not just with Nindies, um, no, but like Nindies have are definitely complementing the huge amount of games that are coming out this year. Where we saw a big first party and a lot of third parties bringing great content. Uh, in 2017, 2018 was kind of a step back, like you mentioned, Austin, with the Nindies really kind of taking the forefront. And this console really being the like, then you know, the portable PS4, uh, since that console really had all the the yeah. Indies on there. Mm-hmm. And now I think 2019 is, you know, they're kind of converging. It's like the best of both worlds, uh, and that we're going to have a lot of this great content from the Nindy side, um, and still get to play Zelda. And still get to play, um, you know, a Pokemon game in the same year. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely and the biggest victory I think for Nintendo is the fact that now we are all saying Nindies and not even giving a second thought. And that turned yeah. out in the Wii U era, and it was like pretty gross and bad. And now here we are, just accepting it <laughs> as the way it is. Like I don't even yeah. think indie games. Now I'm thinking Nindies, and it's not right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with thousands of indie Nintendo. Yeah, like it's it's just now become part of the lexicon. It also it, it makes you think that. how hard it is for, like there must be a, a ton of any any developers who are vying to be in these types of directs, you know. Yeah. Cuz other games I mean they had to just kind of throw a bunch out at the end, you know, at the, before they showed yeah. the the final the final game. They were just like, "And here's a list of like things that are coming out this week or right. next week." It's, it's like a hundred new indies come to the Switch like every month, right? Like at least, like it's some some absurd number. <laughs> it feels like weekly. Um, there's like so much trash in the eShop. There's no way to filter through it. But the, it. Yeah. I remember back in the Wii U era when there'd be interviews with like, oh, I'm the Nintendo's an indie director, or whatever. And you know, no disrespect to the games that were on the Wii U for indies, but it it was like very slim pickings, and it was a lot of stuff that was on other platforms that looked better and ran better and was on popular platforms that your friends were on. And you know, there just wasn't mm-hmm, much of an incentive mm-hmm. outside of games like fast rmx that felt like f-zero to play those things on nintendo and now there is i mean it's the md platform everyone talks about how crazy you know nintendo sales are i see their expectations so it makes me wonder what other you know what other games are we going to get made by indies so that's like a fun you know little thing to think right. about um, to speculate yeah, yeah I, no, I would love like the Cuphead guys to do like a Mario game. I mean, Mario being like their most classic oh God, icon that would look of Nintendo. So cool, <laughs> right? I mean, Mario right. as a character, all that whole cast of characters from the Mario universe would look right. so great in that art style. Because I feel right, like, like timeless Disney characters. Oh yeah, right. exactly. Like Mario is Nintendo's Mickey, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's that's his. That would be the face super cool. Franchise. We'll um, see, but uh, you know, then yeah. yeah, then Microsoft's gonna go publish it. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is that Maybe. like Crypt of the Necrodancer is an example of a Nintendo IP, but being made in the style of the indie, right? So it's not, even though it is a Zelda game, it's not quite the same thing as like Mercury Steam made Samus Returns for 3DS. They were, they're a small developer, but they made a traditional uh, mm-hmm. Metroid remake. And so, you know, what other games would you basically adopt the Nintendo IP, but just put it on top of, you know, pre-existing popular indie titles. That's like a, you know, a little bit of a different prospect, but kind of an exciting one. Like you always see the little weird stuff. Like there was Twilight Princess Pit Cross, like on 3DS. That was like a free mm-hmm. Club Nintendo mm-hmm. game. Like that's mm-hmm. a Nintendo uh, puzzle game. But you could see like, oh, is there a chance? Like Kirby. Like every other Kirby game is some weird experimental thing. Like what if we got a Kirby game, but it's done in the style of like, uh, you know, I don't know, Baba is You, which is like a puzzle game on Switch now that uses like a kind of yeah. code like 
phrases to determine like the rules of an individual puzzle to reach a flag like just things yeah. take a knit a property put it onto a very cool indie game and see what the combo looks like is right of, yeah nintendo has to really it? appreciate uh what that developer is doing you know like really kind of catch on to yeah i think nintendo i mean the uh this this developer from you know crypt of the necro dancer there they were doing something that caught nintendo's eye that they yeah. haven't been doing you know before and also kind of fell into their their own interests of i mean nintendo loves their rhythm beat music games yeah um, donkey konga mm-hmm. um <laughs> so i don't I, I think it's interesting i don't know like i'm like could we see splatoon characters show up in something you know like a non-splatoon yeah. game or in like a, a sprite form somewhere i, I guess don't know one one that i'm thinking of now is like what if we saw like a like what what if there was an advanced wars by the of course the war groove chucklefish team but it was like more war groove than advanced wars but use the advanced wars ip you know you had like the leader unit it's kind of like days of ruin mm. on the ds but something like that or something that i'm thinking now is dead cells was a great game indie game on switch last year and it has these rpg mechanics because though you go you get a little further you die you pick up a couple of skills you level up you use your currency that you did not lose upon death to invest in these powers a game that's a little bit like that but not platformer or action game is uh you know like fire emblem the loop of getting a unit a little mm. stronger upgrading a unit yeah. not wanting your unit to die like yeah. those are such core themes to fire emblem what if they're in like an action platformer where you're playing as crom or someone and you get a little further and you upgrade their class or you get just leveled up a little then there's some type of narrative reason why they rebirth but there's still the threat of death and losing your progress on a single run like that would be an awesome merger um so it'd be neat to see those types of things happen. Yeah, you're totally right. Greece. Yeah. No, a lot no, of, uh, no, hopefully, no. yeah, definitely exciting mm-hmm. times ahead. Hopefully some really cool crossovers continue between Nintendo and big publishers, you know, like your Ubisofts of the world, the small little Nintendo, uh, Nindy developers. Um, yeah, we will uh, certainly be keeping an eye out for that. And we look forward to discussing it here on another Nintendo podcast uh, as we move to the future. Um but yeah, I think that's where we'll we'll wrap this show up for today, boys. Um, thank you all for joining us. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, on all the podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, the Google Podcasts, Podcast Apple One. Apple TV Plus will be on there Apple soon. TV yeah, Plus. In, the in case you missed us, in the, uh, in you know, on Steve Jobs Theater, we were there. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you, all of you, you ANPers, for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Bye.